and today we will talk about the projects, uh, the further projects in chemoinformatics and synthetic biology, which include computational methods and uh, some algorithms we, we were trying to develop in order to analyze some biomedical phenomena. So the first project is uh, related to the blood-brain barrier. I was already talking about the blood-brain barrier. What is uh, the, uh, what exactly the function of this, uh, this uh, the structure and biological entity and how uh, this blood band barrier protects the brain from different uh, xenobiotics, uh, pathogens, etc. So blood band barrier is a semi permeable uh, barrier between the blood and the nervous tissue and it protects the, the central nervous system from the penetration of undesirable substances, such as different pathogens, uh, drugs, uh, very harmful toxins, and uh, different uh, unwanted substances that would cause some harmful effect to the brain. So the ability to permeate the blood brain barrier is one of the most important parameters in pharmacology, uh, we have uh, different uh, tools how to analyze and uh, how to uh, evaluate the permeation of the brain using the experiment to the brain, experimental and theoretical ones. <clears throat> this is particularly important for, for the drugs that affect the central nervous systems and could easily <clears throat> overcome the blood brain barrier. Some other classes of drugs, uh, on the contrary, should overcome the blood brain barrier as badly as possible to, in order to avoid the side effects. So, uh, on one hand, the blood brain barrier protects the brain, on the other, if we will make it, um, if we will keep it impermeable, then <coughs> the substances, the, uh, the drug-like substances would not permeate the blood brain barrier uh, and, and will not reach the sites of action to treat some uh, CNS-related diseases, for example, uh, cancer like uh, glioblastoma, etc. So it is very difficult to measure permeability experimentally. This is true. There are some different techniques like in vivo, in vitro techniques where you have the, 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 the system which is called the transwell system because you have two compartments. One is the apical compartment and the other is the basolateral compartment and they are separated uh, by the semi-permeable membrane which is usually the pet membrane it has also the, the pores that are similar to those uh, which are present uh, in reality in the brain so uh, you could uh, harvest the cells like that you you have a uh, semi-impermeable membrane, then you simply harvest in the telial cells, <clears throat> and the telial cells are forming some kind of a monolayer at the top of the uh, semi-impermeable membrane, and then they are separated in the apical and basolateral, um, basolateral parts of this transfer system. <clears throat> you also have different cells, especially at the you know, basolateral side, such as astrocytes, neurons, uh, parasites, 
and they created very very sophisticated six microglial cells like, such as uh, such as uh, astrocytes you have here and, uh, and they um, created very sophisticated system which separates the the blood and the brain and uh, in order to you also have a, a flow dynamics here so if uh, you want to model the, the the system which is closely related to the real life then you of course have to provide the uh, the, the blood flow and uh, some 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 parameters like uh, adding the, the blood cells uh, to, the, to the system to see how it's actually, or some proteins, uh, to see how it actually affects the, the permeation as well. So the system is very complex, and in our settings, we just approximated it by using the, uh, by using the, the usually the endothelial cells, in our experiments we are using, and uh, CN cells, uh, these are murine endothelial cells from, from the microvascular uh, system of the, uh, of the mice, and we motilized those uh, cells and uh, prepared it as a, uh, suitable to, to harvest on, the, on, on different surfaces like, like a pet. So if you will add the substance, the substance usually is not permeating. Ninety-eight uh, percent of substances are not permeating through the blood brain barrier. Only two uh, percent would permeate, and uh, you have also different routes of this permeation. The substance could permeate through the endothelial cells as a as a route which includes the uh, permeation through the uh, lipid membranes. The other is uh, uh, the other route would include the permeation between the endothelial cells, where the where uh, the tight junctions are, and the tight junctions are the, the proteins which uh, bind together uh, different cells. You have some protein like the zonular clodins, occludins, clodins. Uh, etc., which uh, are very important uh, uh, markers of the blood brain barrier tightness. So, in order to uh, to understand whether the blood brain barrier uh, compromised or the tightness is not is not decreasing, then you would express you would analyze the expression of some tight junction. Uh, some tight junction proteins like uh, uh, clodin 5, zonular clodins, and if the expression is low, then probably the, they are compromised. Um, therefore, the scientists have uh, high hopes for machine learning also to predict the blood brain barrier uh, penetration by drugs before <clears throat> difficult and time-consuming experiment. And this is true. We wanted first to uh, create uh, machine learning models or regression, simple regression models, and uh, would try to understand uh, the, and try to separate only those molecules which will permeate the blood brain barrier more efficiently. And then we would go further doing some sophisticated experiments, either in vitro or in vivo. Uh, we can also uh, use the in vivo settings like, uh, like homogenates uh, settings. Last time I already explained what we, what we did uh, using this technique. We just um, injected the, the substance into the mice and then um, sacrificed the mice, collected the the blood and collected the brain, prepared the homogenate from the brain and analyzed the, the drug concentration in the homogen brain homogenates and in the blood. And after that, we calculated the blood brain barrier index indices and 
compare them to the theoretical values. So uh, this uh, experiment has uh, some limitations. The, for instance, you cannot screen uh, this a lot of uh, a lot of animal, uh, a lot of drugs because the experiments are time consuming and you have to also sacrifice uh, a substantial number of animals and uh, cannot be actually upscaled to a, uh, to a, for the uh, for the screening yeah, for the screening experiments uh, the other possibility would be to use microdialysis when you have uh, some kind of a catheter then you would just implant this catheter into the into the brain where the uh, cerebrovascular unit is usually you can you can uh, insert it into some uh, ventricles some brain ventricles and by uh, stimulating or inhibiting some uh, some receptors or analyzing some particular disease you can actually you can inject the drug and then at the real time you can uh, you can analyze dialysate coming from the uh, catheter and you have some kind of a real time uh, system for the for the uh, for the drug analysis uh, using this uh, 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 this experimental settings this uh, system is also uh, is also very very sophisticated you have to do the microsurgery you have to implant the this catheter in the right, you have to use the stereotactic chamber. So actually you have the, the person should be very skillful. Neurosurgeon and the experimental neurosurgeon uh, to perform this operation. So actually it's not uh, very well achievable in an in a ordinary setting. So the laboratory should be also equipped and, and so on. But Again, this is possible to perform, and it's quite uh, uh, quite uh, advanced in, in a way that you can actually monitor the, the concentration of the drug in real time, which has a very very big uh, benefit. So, what kind of uh, computational methods could, could be implemented to analyze the blood-brain barrier? And these methods are summarized in, in this abstract from my previous publications. When you have in silica, molecular and cellular modeling, and you would upscale it to in silica tissue and organ engineering. As you see here, we have some, some models which would include the investigation of uh, investigation of protein, uh, protein, protein interaction, uh, like some transporters, like ABCG4 transporter, and how uh, some uh, amyloid beta uh, binding site, where the amyloid beta binding site, uh, which are known very important for the Alzheimer's disease, are uh, located uh, in, in, the, in this transporter. Again, uh, you could also an analyze the neurotoxic effect of some excipients here at the blood-brain barrier. And this was also taken, this model was also taken from my previous publication where we were trying to analyze the uh, host gas interaction. And this is the uh, methylated cyclodextrin and um, and uh, uh, cholesterol molecule and the affinity to uh, cyclodextrin affinity uh, or cholesterol affinity to the cyclodextrin would also uh, would also increase the uh, or decrease the cytotoxic effect of cyclodextrin due to uh, due to the depletion of the cholesterol from the uh, lipid membranes. 
the other technique uh, was also implemented to use so so-called coarse grain modeling when you have uh, some uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, tight junctional proteins like clodin 15 and you would try to uh, reconstitute the, uh, the, the, the the barrier tightness upon the, the upon uh, the the, the breakage which would occur at this at, uh, at this uh, position where the barrier was compromised due to some diseases or some harmful effect coming from some uh, toxic substances. And uh, all this system could be also used as a coarse grain MD model. TBI, for instance, to to to, to analyze how uh, some some nanoparticles, nanobubbles, uh, would re represent the configuration of the simulated endothelial cells as vesicles. So there are different uh, different transporters also involved in a, in a, uh, expressed at the, the blood band variant. Uh, some of them is a GLUT transporter, glucose transporter variant one. Uh, you also have a multi drug uh, resistant transporter, the, the PG, PGP transporter, BCRP transporter. Some, are trans some transporters are known to be uh, important for to, tra uh, to transfer some neurotransmitters like blood brain barrier, uh, choline transporter. Uh, there are also some transporters. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, Анастасия, О? вас слышно? I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, Anastasia was talking. I was thinking she's talking to me. So Anastasia, you have to disable the microphone. Oh yes, I have done so. Right. I mean, otherwise you are also interfering with the lecture. So please do so. So uh, let's let's go back to let's go back to the simulation of the, the blood band barrier. Uh, you could uh, you could un investigate the the blood band barrier, barrier alteration, which are associated with different clinical conditions, like uh, traumatic brain, brain injury, brain edema, stroke. The stroke can be a schematic stroke hemorrhagic stroke, different brain tumors, drug cytotoxic effects, and so on. So, so I already mentioned that uh, we have different receptors, we have different uh, uh, proteins that hold together the, the blood brain barrier. We have different transporters, and all these uh, uh, transporters are increasing the, the complexity of the system. And uh, uh, these are just uh, a couple of uh, a few examples of uh, of some simulated system and how we could actually use some uh, uh, computational models. Uh, the other example is to uh, to create some kind of a, a cancer tissue uh, variability of morphologic patterns predicted by the mathematical model, some kind of uh, uh, organoids uh, where you just harvesting the, the endothelial cell, malignant endothelial cells here, and you would use the, uh, the, 
the FEM analysis, uh, finite element analysis to recreate this kind of a pattern. But uh, again, this is very, very, very simplistic, but still used in a, in a cancer research. And the other possibility is to use uh, the FEM models where you could uh, you could create the, 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 the red brain here uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the human spinal cord to investigate the dynamic uh, deformations associated with the blood brain barrier, uh, trauma, trauma brain, traumatic brain injuries or different uh, uh, central nervous system pathologies. So one could also uh, recreate the, 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 the areas where they are they're damaged and simulate them, implementing their uh, differential equations. So in our case, we try to implement the uh, chemoinformatics approaches for, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to investigate the blood brain barrier. Uh, and how the substances would permeate uh, the blood brain barrier. So for that, we were using the, the databases and uh, some, some equations that are actually uh, devised in the past. And we could actually separate the, the substances into two groups. One is the uh, blood brain barrier permea permeating and the other is not. So like two separated, the, the two classify. We have some classifiers like uh, separated, uh, separated by uh, from each other, and uh, to do to do the clusterization. As you can see here, one group would be the blood brain barrier plus, and the other would be the blood brain barrier mi minus. And we have different publications. Uh, different models, which were previously elaborated by uh, by by researchers. So, for instance, Van et al. and co-authors in 2018 uh, produced uh, de developed the model, which is publicly available. They're using relatively relatively small database, but in comparison to comparison to the classical models like Clark and Richton, the database doesn't really look very small because if coming back, if looking back to the 2001, 2002, uh, and uh, the information about the permeation, uh, permeation of the drugs through the blood brain barrier was very limited. So we had only the database up to 100 different substances. And here we have up to uh, more than 2,000 different compounds. And, and then synthetic data was used to overcome class imbalances issues. Uh, the, this synthetic da data may not be captured, cap may not capture the intricacies of real world, uh, real world data. Uh, but if we will look at the rock, uh, rock curve, uh, our area under the curve, so we will see that actually, the, as shown here, that the, the value is, is quite good. And uh, in, diff in, in, the other, in the other studies, people are using using similar approaches, also calculated the ROC AUC values area under the curve, uh, report operating characteristics and area under the curve, which is uh, at, in the range of uh, 0 0.6, 0, 0 0.96, 0 0.99, which is quite impressive here. Yeah. And they are using the relatively large database data sets provided uh, up to 8,000 different substances. All these data are uh, publicly available. Uh, also, synthetic data was used to overcome 
the class and balance issues. And here, uh, even more, uh, Mazumda and Kofas in 2023, they are using up to uh, 8,000 different substances. So the data is also publicly available and they achieved the impressive results as a 0 0.99. So uh, they're using the, the uh, consensus models, and uh, the main problem of this uh, this model is that models with highest evaluation metrics are publicly unavailable. So it is impossible to reproduce the experiments and use these models for for the research. So uh, if the uh, they are, uh, they are using the, the high number of substances, and then uh, they're not really providing the, num the, the substances themselves, so it's not really feasible to reproduce the results. And again, this would also raise very big questions whether the, this, particular, uh, this particular research is uh, has any 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 value in terms of the applicability and uh, also if it's if if it violates the ethics uh, the experimental uh, the, the the scientific the the research ethics because um, um, most of the time and uh, it's a good practice when you have all the uh, all the models uh, generated uh, you will share them with all the scientific with the scientific community. So uh, uh, everyone who, if, who is interested in uh, doing similar similar projects and this experiment could simply use your your generated data or the experimental data to uh, come up to the similar results. And people would also appreciate that uh, your uh, your data would also expedite their research and uh, rep the, they, would, uh, they would be able to reproduce the data. Okay, so at this point, uh, we uh, also uh, did the data mining and uh, Anastasia did uh, some data mining concerning the uh, different models and different uh, different uh, results we have. For instance, uh, here we have a, a very small uh, data set, extremely small data set of 45 substances and uh, uh, the authors produced uh, relatively good. Uh, the Gibbs free energy of binding where they have the, uh, almost 0 0.8 correlation coefficient and the cross validation is like 0 0.7, and root mean square error is uh, is about 0 0.3, which uh, which looks also good. However, however, the the number of the the, the data the data set was uh, was extremely small, and again, uh, it was not available. So again. I would uh, raise a big question about the reproducibility and the, uh, the feasibility of this data. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we could rely on the on the data set of uh, on the small data set of uh, uh, 5, 000, 500 uh, uh, drug-like compounds, which have the experimental. Uh, blood brain barrier uh, values, the log BB values, and here you have uh, uh, you have the the model which predicts the log BB and how and uh, and how the substances would permeate through the blood brain barrier. So these results are relatively good. It was published by Ratchenko from Moscow, from the uh, Moscow State University and to 2020, as, as you can see on this graph, they have a quite uh, strong, uh, quite strong correlation and uh, the, 
cross validation is zero is uh, 0 0.8 uh, on the other hand i don't really see the uh, the, the, the correlation called the, the the r squared coefficient here but i'm sure it might be also similar to to what we have in the cross validation so this data is publicly available and i'm sure anastasia Anastasia utilized this, this data set for, for our research and uh, we could actually adopt it for our um, machine learning models. Uh, the other publication was uh, produced by uh, Vu and co in 2021 when they have also root mean square error test yeah, about 0 0.2 and again this is publicly and available i would conclude that if this data is public and publicly and available then uh, the publication per se is useless because you can just you will not use any information uh, deriving from the from this data set you cannot apply you cannot use the, uh, the the standard techniques like regression models or the machine learning models. So, uh, I would pro I would uh, probably try to to reject this kind of paper because I mean there is no any any translational uh, trans any translational uh, impact of this publication uh, whatsoever. So then I would just skip this uh, information because anyway, we cannot really uh, comment on the, on the results due to the unavailability of the, of the data. And again, the main problem that all the, all the existing models were trained on a small data set, so the obtained results are not reliable enough. These models are also uh, publicly unavailable, so the results cannot be reproduced. Yeah. So, what is the idea to use the uh, to use the machine learning models uh, for for our for the to analyze the substances using the blood brain barrier? And the aim is to develop more reliable and publicly available machine learning models for the classification, the regression, train the large data sets without using synthetic data uh, generation technology. So the synthetic data is a kind of enrichment data. On one hand, you have uh, the limitation uh, in an uh, experimental data. So you will just generate some, you will take some synthetic data, make some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, data, synthetic data, for, such as here, you have imbalance, then you have balance, then you com combine all together and produce the, the higher number of compounds. And of course, uh, uh, we could, if we will have, we will have, we would have a uh, have a large data set, then we would we would uh, use uh, this kind of approaches. So the objectives, what are the objectives? The objectives are to collect data for the machine learning using the SMILES format, uh, clean up the data, uh, uh, ana analyzing the, the uh, atomic, uh, atomic distribution, uh, the, the, the number of atoms, uh, the, the, the bonds, and uh, whether the conversion is, uh, is 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 successful and after that when the, we will clean clean up the, the the molecular data we could actually calculate various parameters of molecules that can be used uh, to feature for as a features for machine learning models uh, such as to combine physical chemical characteristics with different types of fingerprints like Avalon, Max, uh, Cats, uh, 2D, Kempap, uh, ACF uh, FP6, uh, as well as fragments based descriptors generating uh, generating uh, 
for, for our machine learning models as fragments. Uh, you would probably uh, would have some, uh, some practical uh, classes concerning this, uh, this pipeline. Uh, Anastasia will, uh, uh, will guide you through all this process of how she actually managed to collect the data, clean up and calculate uh, various, uh, various parameters in Python. And then when uh, we calculated the particular uh, descriptors, we, uh, we used them uh, for artificial neural networks and ensemble machine learning algorithms like uh, CatBoost, XG, XGBoost, Random Forest, LGBM algorithms to predict uh, the, the target variable and then to compare the, the performance. So uh, the, the idea would be to, to try to use classification label as an additional feature for the regression test. And after that, when we were able to predict the log VB using the machine models, we would create some, uh, some kind of a regression, regression plot, regression-like plot when we have the log VB experimental versus log VB predicted, and we would uh, determine some uh, some indices like the core cross validation uh, core coefficient or the, the regression, the, the correlation coefficient with the MRSE to see whether we achieve the higher uh, accuracy and predictability uh, for this particular database. So uh, the data processing is, in, is, a, is a very important uh, step to, um, uh, to prepare, the, to prepare the, the molecules for the machine learning. And for this, we are using the data sources like B3DB database and molecules from, uh, uh, from the data set collected by Tewis Yan. And bring all smiles to the canonical form. So smiles are in the canonical form. You also have the isomeric, isomeric smiles, and uh, they are not really suitable for our model. Uh, drop duplicates and uh, and ends uh, delete all the inorganic molecules. In the case of the regression test, we have to remove these molecules, which BB exceeds to standard deviation from the mean value. So uh, we have the, the Miniconda Jupyter notebooks where we already uh, devised the script how actually how we could uh, uh, clean clean up the data, uh, removing all this unnecessary unnecessary information. As it's shown here, we have to remove uh, some 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 metals, some inorganic substances, and so on. And after that, we could uh, we could have something like that, uh, like uh, like the uh, smiles, uh, like the smile strings. And for these smile strings, we could actually have the the log BB values, the experimental log BB values. We could also produce the the Gaussian uh, distribution curve, and uh, some of them are the the count of the molecules the most of the molecules have the, the distribution from uh, 0 to uh, at least 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, I would say even 0 0.2, and uh, the rest just going, uh, going down. So this half of the molecules is, is known to be very, uh, very lipophilic, more lipophilic and highly permeable through the blood red barrier in, and if you have a negative structure then you would have a have a uh, you would impair the permeation of the, the drugs through the blood red barrier again we have different uh, matrices for the uh, for as a as a threshold uh, to, uh, for the permeation of the, of the substances some matrices using the the value of uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, uh, the others are using uh, just uh, zero, and uh, and uh, 
and it separates the, the substances into two groups. Sometimes you can separate into three groups like uh, impermeable, mildly permeable, and uh, very permeable. It depends on the, the, the thresholds you have and uh, all this information can be integrated into the, uh, into the algorithm. So, and then what is the what is the pipeline to evaluate the quality of the model? Fivefold cross validation was performed, and the training set was eighty percent, and the test set, set was twenty percent. I think these are the standard uh, st uh, kind of standard percentage for the training set for the test set, and a ba basic set of features were uh, we, we took uh, physical chemical descriptors, uh, which are the uh, the constituents of the RD kit Python library. So the main uh, tool uh, to generate the, the descriptors is the RD kit, and you can generate some descriptors like the felicity descriptors, like log P, log S, uh, PSA, H, uh, 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 SASA. Uh, the, the number of atoms, the number of bonds, the, the, fr the, the fragments, for instance, the, the substructure uh, distribution, uh, the, the charges, and, and so on. So any uh, possible any possible descriptors you you could you could think of which uh, which are uh, programmed in a in a RD kit you could uh, you could put in your model. Uh, so here, uh, these are just an examples of different descriptors. Uh, we have also molecular fingerprints, and the molecular fingerprints are subgroups which are uh, encoded in, a, in a, some kind of a strings. And you have a Weber uh, finger, uh, max, uh, max fingerprints, and so on. So there are different fingerprints which are available. Uh, these fingerprints are also important to, uh, to be used to uh, to to implement the the Tanimoto similarity or daylight sim similarity scoring function and uh, all other different methods. Uh, some of the fragmentation uh, fragmentation protocol are important to modify the molecule, like the uh, hopping sc scaffold hopping technique. I continue with the. Uh, uh, general working pipeline. I was talking about the molecular descriptors, and uh, here's an example how the molecular descriptors encoded in different keys, like in different fingerprints. You have Morgan circular fingerprints, Avalon fingerprint, which is also uh, widely used in a minimum topology similarity and. Uh, from each of the data set of features, 75% of best of the best were selected using select key best method of the Sky uh, Skylon Python library. The feature selection was carried out according to the mutual informa information criteria. We also provided our own fragment-based fingerprints using the fingerprint generator, which is the part of the uh, uh, which is the part of the uh, RD kit library and fragments with the frequency occurrence of less than 1% throughout the database was screened out. So these are the main uh, packages, uh, package libraries in, uh, in RD kit, uh, the Sky, Skylon package library and RD kit package library for the open source scheme informatics and the machine learning. So the results of the classification task you see here using the, uh, some, uh, some algorithms like machine, machine, learning, machine learning algorithms. Uh, here is the, is the scheme of the artificial neural network where you have uh, perceptrons, uh, input files, then you hidden, have a hidden layers so that you have an output outputs versus XG XG boost algorithm. So on one hand you have a 
uh, neural machine learning, neural network, neural artificial network, and on the other FXG most algorithm. So after data processing uh, seven thousand, uh, more than seven thousand molecules were left, uh, which were uh, subdivided into five thousand uh, blood and very permeable and. Uh, 3,000, uh, 2,800 BVP permeable. The results obtained using the various ensemble algorithms do not have statistically significant differences due to overlap in the confidence interval. And the best uh, performance was uh, uh, gained by the XG boost model with the rock uh, uh, area under the curve value. Uh, close to 0 0.96. And uh, artificial neural networks turned, to, turned out to be worse than the ensemble models. And the PDB structure fingerprints don't describe the target variables well enough. And fragment performance is quite close to the leading one, but still not as good. And they have values from of 0 0.95, 959 and 0 0.959 as well versus versus the best and so as you can see here this is the classical ensemble model and uh, you have rdkit rdkit plus fragments rdkit plus avalon uh, descriptors like Max, PubMed, PubChem, the PubCap substantial substructure fingerprint, different fingerprint enrichment was, was done, and we had found that uh, the, there are the kit plus fragments gave us the best, uh, best score in comparison to the other, and uh, among them. Uh, X, uh, XG boost was was also the best with the value of 0 0.96 and uh, also the Avalon, the Ardikit plus Avalon descriptor gave us also a very good performance with 0 0.919 also 0 0.96 which are very close here. So the artificial neural networks gave us the 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 value is lower than the the XG, XG boost performance and it was uh, it was only 0 0.95 so the results of the regression model you you can observe here the database was our database was uh, also was also very very big so in comparison to uh, this database is published, uh, specifically the classical models, which were uh, only limited to less than to, to less than uh, 100 uh, C drug-like molecules. So, and um, uh, this data could also be upscaled further to be integrated in a, in a neuroclick or we could also derive, it could be also used to derive some equation to calculate the, the log BB value. So after data processing, only 100, 1,130 molecules were left. The results obtained using various examples uh, and uh, was gained, it was Perform the best performance was gained by the artificial neural network with this particular and uh, these particular values. However, uh, generally artificial neural networks do not provide any significant improvement uh, compared to the ensemble model. So it will take the classification task for the classification tasks. The, the best is the XG boost, and for the regression task, we have the rest, which is the artificial neural network, uh, and uh, and also the XG boost with the high 
value maybe high the number of uh, uh, correlation coefficient so um, these results are uh, very very promising and uh, again uh, those of you who's interested in uh, software development we have some uh, some projects related to the generation the next generation of the neuroclick software or some other software like uh, orthoclick to to be developed further then we could also implement this uh, this regression more, more, this this new machine learning more models into the software okay and these are the this is just a summary of our results here what are the algorithms we were using what are the results uh, and some of them are also performing quite good here you can see uh, comparing but the, the cross validation was uh, was achieved by using the xg boost and uh, uh, and this algorithm can be further further be implemented in the neuroclick okay so the conclusion that the publicly available machine learning methods for the classification and regression were created in case of the regression task the the results obtained in our study are more reliable than the previously published uh, the best scores were achieved by using the XGBoost machine learning algorithm. Overall, neural network did not give a substantial uh, gain in the comparison with uh, ensemble models. Uh, fragments uh, proved to be the optimal set of, of data for machine learning regression tasks. The use of classification model as a feature can substantially increase the quality of the regression regression models. The use of class labels obtained by the predictive model does not lead to traumatic deterioration in the result compared to use to the use of real pre-known labels. So the next plans are improve the uh, the predictability uh, even using using even the largest larger uh, data sets. Uh, here is the supplementary material we have and those of you who is interested uh, can, could find this information in the paper which could be published uh, in, um, could be published soon it was already undergoing it is already undergoing the review so hopefully it will be online in a couple of months. So what is the other projects I would like to talk about? This is the project is related to the click chemistry and the, and the, and the click reaction. And uh, here I'm also putting the orthogonal chemistry. What is it, what is, is it good for? Why we are interested in this reaction? Because uh, this, this reaction is is kind of uh, very promising in terms of the generation of uh, the synthetic data and for this you only have to provide the the, the small number of reactants uh, you have azide alkyne if it azide azide alkyne cycle addition then you would have azide and alkyne and uh, with azide group and the uh, in the alkyne group and uh, like shown here and uh, due to the usage of different uh, catalysts like uh, copper catalyst or the heat activated reaction you would have different isomers like 1.5 and 1.4 isomers and sometimes the mixture of different isomers like, like for heat activation and for the uh, copper a catalyzed reaction you have only 1.4 isomer so this reaction was kind of a starter when we 
uh, integrated it in our NeuroClick uh, software. And uh, we uh, used uh, the sets of, uh, uh, sets of, diff of uh, adzites and all kinds, uh, adzite molecule. And um, uh, by upscaling it, we could uh, generate uh, different, uh, uh, different products. After that, we will take these products to, uh, to measure the blood brain barrier permeation activity. So this reaction is, all, is important as a, as, a, as a standard click reaction, but on the other hand, if you would like to uh, go further, then you would probably use something like bioorganic chemistry uh, to, to uh, improve the uh, selectivity, biological inertness, chemical inertness, kinetics, reaction biocompatibility, and uh, access accessibility, accessible engineering for this reaction. For instance, if you will use the, this classical click reaction, then you would uh, probably come up with some structures which are not very good uh, applicable to the cell engineering, like, like those we want to, to use uh, if we have some, some uh, biotagonal ligation, then we cannot re really use the catalyst and uh, like fluor fluorophore or the affinity probe, uh, which, uh, which can be attached to the cells by means of the click reaction. So this is the, this is the one uh, drawback of the, uh, of the copper catalyzed click reaction. The other is when you try to generate the big database, probably the copper catalyzed is not a best candidate because it's very toxic. So uh, the, due to this toxicity, one could probably come up with some uh, contaminates coming from this catalyst. And uh, this, catal this contaminates would also interfere with the biological application of this particular substance. So also not very, uh, very encouraging and therefore uh, we wanted to um, we wanted to increase some kind of a chemical inertness and a bi biological inertness uh, when we use the reactive partners and resulting linkage should not be possessed any of the reactivity capable of disturbing the native chemical functionality of the organism under the study. Uh, for instance, if we are using the standard click reaction, then we can use the modifications of this reaction, like is shown, is shown here for the, uh, for the biotagonality and uh, uh, as, such as uh, nitrone depot cycle addition. So this, this is the COPA free click chemistry and has uh, been adopted to use the nitrons, nitrons to to use as a 1.3 de, depot rather than azide, and has been used in the modification of peptides because azides, uh, azides they are used they they have been used in the modification of peptides, and here we don't really have the azides, we have the nitrons. And these nitrons can be used further to uh, the nitrons can be used further to uh, to 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 uh, proceed to be to be implemented for the uh, biotagonal reaction. So this. Nitron we use on one hand, on the other, cycloactine, and we have some, uh, some molecule uh, to form the end alkanated isoxazoline. Isoxazoline molecule is formed 
uh, which uh, is also is also has a has a radicals. You will uh, you will have a library either of uh, different uh, uh, cyclic molecule, cyclactyne, or the nitron. Then we would produce uh, different uh, also various substances, which would include our which would uh, include various various radicals. So then we will just take them and screen through the blood and barrier and to see how they actually permeate to and what is the biological function if we would like to integrate some uh, some other predictions or how they would uh, how they would interact with uh, some some receptors at the blood brain barrier like the PGP or uh, some proteins in the blood like a plasma a protein for uh, plasma plasma proteins different plasma protein so this pathway can be also integrated into the neuroclick and uh, then we could uh, we could also uh, see the so we could check the feasibility of this reaction and uh, probably we would have some some candidates which are promising to 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 inhibit or to stimulate some uh, protein targets uh, one could also search for similar uh, structures before doing this click reaction and how these similar structures are um, uh, similar structures are uh, effective against uh, different uh, different proteins such as uh, different transporters uh, uh, this could be the, the the transporters in the brain like the like like ones we already screens like dopamine uh, dopamine receptors or uh, we, we could also try to uh, try to create some some kind of fossil fossil um, fossil like ligand to activate death receptors and if we will do so then we will also have a leverage to uh, to increase the apoptotic events in a in a in a, in a cancer population so and this is the this is the classical orthogonal reaction here you have azide a label azide label uh, biomolecules uh, then you would uh, have the cyclooctane label probe, and by uh, by uh, performing the click reaction, you would have the covalently conjugated biomolecules. In theory, this um, this this technique is is can be performed within the cells because you. Know, don't really have any any interference with the metabolic pathways which are taking place in the cell. Uh, however, uh, this uh, this technique is not really feasible to design like blood, like uh, drug like molecules because uh, this process includes uh, labeled biomolecules on one hand. On the other, you have some some probe which you're probably trying to uh, to uh, to use to, as, a, as a reporter molecule. So for some so for some biological assays, like if it's proteasome, then you would, or if it's uh, some uh, some mutated uh, protein like CFTR, then you would uh, uh, use this as a clickable. To attach the, the uh, attach some uh, some some probe via this orthogonal click, click, click reaction in the cell. In our case, we wanted to just to program the orthogonal or by orthogonal click reaction to decrease the toxicity of the substances we are, we would like to generate. If uh, if one could upscale it further, then mm, there might be the possibility to to use the click reaction on the antibodies. If you have an antibody fragment, 
and you would like to make it like uh, like like this the little like a secondary antibody because usually you don't really have uh, uh, the 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 label on the on the secondary on the primary antibody you would you have to use the primary antibody and the secondary antibody in the in the cytochemistry or histochemistry assays then you would just simply turn the primary antibodies into the secondary antibodies by using the uh, bioorthogonal chemistry uh, to adding the, the, the reporter molecule by, by means of the click reaction. This is also possible and very uh, exciting, exciting methodology one could utilize, for example, to achieve the uh, high accuracy and the less uh, in, in the, and decrease the, the number of stages you have to perform in a conventional uh, distal chemistry. Okay, and so this is just a couple of uh, slides concerning our software. Uh, what we did, we compared our software with some standard uh, algorithms that are already available on the internet and they were published uh, 10 years ago, such as AutoClick Chem, and, uh, and this is just uh, uh, the library where you can also uh, generate, it's not really click chemistry, but this is rather a library when you could just generate the, um, the combinatorial lab library enumeration and the, and the flexible and portable smiles notations. So um, our our NeuroClick software combines these both strengths and uh, no weaknesses, as far as I know. And uh, this might be some, some, some benefit for the scientific community to utilize our software. So how does it work? It has the also R&D kit uh, within its uh, uh, pipeline and you you, if you have a compound, you will convert it to smiles notations and then kind of smiles feature matrix and uh, how it works actually. You, you have some azides, you have some alkynes, you download azides and alkynes and by uh, uh, executing our algorithm, the, the software will start the click reaction according to the you know, uh, smart, uh, smart patterns are sh which are shown here. So you will, uh, you will produce uh, either 1.4 or 1.5 as a mere score, uh, all this as a mere score together through the triazole substances are generated. The algorithm is quite fast and you can generate up to 10,000 different uh, different compounds, products per, per minute. And uh, the, the, the second version also includes the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics descriptors. And these descriptors would, into, would be uh, integrated already in our software and they include uh, additional information like molecular weight, heavy atoms, aromatic heavy atoms, fractions, uh, CSP3, rotational bones, molar refractivity, topological surface, topological polysurface area, and so on. Also, the drugability, drug likeness, the quantitative estimate of drug likeness, the so, so called head descriptor. And uh, you could actually save the, the results in different formats. Like, uh, like, uh, more two, more, and, and so on. So, uh, okay, thank you for your attention, and I uh, think we will 